Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Georgetown Middle High School School Building Committee meeting. Uh, do we have anyone from the public? No, she's just at the door looking. I don't think this is the right committee. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to approve the minutes from September 24th, 2013. I don't have them with me. But Do you want to glance I think I at I mine? Yeah. Would anyone care to make a motion? So moved. Anyone? Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Did you remember? Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And carry abstains. Check. We have. Um, Several invoices for the middle high school project. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I take it back. We have two invoices from the middle high school project. Municipal for $3,360. DRA for $2,651.50 for a total of $6,011.50. Um, we don't actually need a vote to approve them, but would you care to vote to approve? Uh, sure. So moved. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion on them? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so you can just send these around for a signature and hand yep. them to Mike. Mm -hmm. We don't have any correspondence. I don't believe we're any old business. And that brings us to any updates from the from Pat from Municipal. What I'm going to do is just uh, touch base on a couple of things, and Chuck can just pull out anything here I missed that's in the report. You can okay. look at the report at the same time. As everybody knows, everything was submitted on the 27th of September to the uh, Curiously, I got a call from uh, Chris Alley's today. He called a couple of times. We were missing each other. He called me. I called him. We went back and forth. I called him again as late as 5 o'clock. He couldn't reach him, so I'll call him in the morning to see what he's looking for. Okay. It may have to do with There was a question that came in. Uh, there was a couple of questions relative to the educational explanation of the life skills area and the sped room area something that requires a little bit more explanation by DRA. They're aware of it, so they'll be making contact with the uh, individuals. In the meantime, I'll find out what Chris has. I'm hoping he just called to confirm we're going to be in the November board meeting because everything was submitted. Assuming it was to their satisfaction, then they would allow us into the board meeting in November, which okay. is what we anticipate. So, uh, but that's about it. We've just been waiting and looking to field any, any questions they might have. Uh, uh, what's uh, the date for that November meeting? Do you know? Uh, it's a Wednesday. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think it's the Is first, it the first Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah, 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 the first Wednesday. Yeah. Oh no, not the first Wednesday. I'm sorry. It's the eighteenth. Uh, <coughs> is that what you said, Chuck? Um, whatever that Wednesday is. Wednesday. Wednesday. Eighteenth of what? Either the thirteenth or the twentieth. Of what month? I'm going to have to check it. November. I'm pretty sure it's the 13th because it wouldn't be the week. Just November? Yeah, November. Right, it was the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving's late. November Thanksgiving's 20th. the 27th. Yeah. November 20th. Yes. Yeah. yes. All right, then it's the 20th. The 20th? Is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Right. It is the 20th. Wait, it's the week before, November not 20th. the Wednesday yeah. before. Yeah. November 20th. 10 o'clock. Okay. So we're all, like I said, we're just looking to, f to feel any questions they have and uh, just get confirmation that we're into the uh, into the board meeting. And then, of course, everything will continue to roll to the, the March board meeting and then to town meeting in the spring. And by that time, you'll have numbers to be able to vote on and we'll keep right on going. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Chuck, anything Great. you want to add uh, off the report? Yeah, that was really it. The, yeah. the only thing in the report was the hi highlight on the, uh, the single dates. That's all. all right. Yeah. Everything else is... As normal, and then obviously, there's movement on the, uh, the, the budget. Yeah. Great. Okay. And actually, that was the update on the submittal. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Carl? Yeah, the one thing Pat mentioned uh, uh, is the only response we've gotten back so far on the, uh, the submittal about the. And, and it appears from their comment that they're they're um, going back in their files, checking what we submitted last year uh, when the plan was slightly it. different. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple comments at that time, but obviously, you know, with the plan shifting around, I think they were a little confused trying to match them up. Match them up, saying, right. you know, we commented on this last year. How did you respond this year? Well, it no longer applies because the okay. plan has shifted. So I think 
it's kind of they just need some clarity understanding there yeah all right <laughs> otherwise yeah no other comments all right okay i believe that wraps up the georgetown middle high school building project meeting can anyone care to make any discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carries the aye. middle high school meeting has adjourned okay. is carol expected to make Yeah. Yeah. We just, mm -hmm. we just no, no, I said school. we have two. Oh, yeah. okay. Good evening and welcome to the Pembroke School Building Committee <laughs> meeting for October 15th, 2013. Um, I, we have some people from the public here. Would anyone care to make any statements this evening? No? Yes. Would you like to state your name for us, please, Mrs. Johnson? I am Faith Johnson. I am at 104 Elm Street. Thank you. Yeah. So you know that the proposed road is very important to us. Yes. And I'm here to express my dismay that I received a letter last week from the um, <coughs> Conservation Commission for an open hearing and that the road is proposed to be extended to 16 feet. I had been promised that I would be notified of any meeting that I would need to attend. I would be notified of any decisions that would, made, would be made. 16 feet is huge. It started out at 10. We kind of absorbed the shock when it went to 12. And now we're asked to absorb the shock of 16 with no notice other than to the whole neighborhood. We felt that, I feel that's a broken promise. And during the summer, other promises were broken. My son drove up from New York City. He is very uh, cognizant of construction, so he is the son that is helping the family. He drove up from New York City for a selectman's meeting and was told when he arrived that the town manager had decided to take a couple of extra days vacation and there would be more no meeting, which was a huge inconvenience for him. In other ways, I feel very let down by the town in not keeping its promises. And in the midst of this, we did what we had avoided for a year. We 
hired a lawyer. And we know that we have what is called prescriptive rights to that land, and we have hired a lawyer to help us protect those rights. And I want you to be cognizant of that. Uh, my question uh, tonight is, <coughs> why? I, I was told that the 16 feet is because the fire department needs 16 feet for its vehicles. Mm -hmm. This plan has been known for a year. Was the fire department not consulted? That just doesn't make sense to me. The architect should have consulted the building committee. I just don't understand why suddenly it's 16 feet, which is huge for us. Preceding um, the summer, we were well informed, but the communications just absolutely broke down and it forced us to hire a lawyer. And we did not want to get into that kind of a contentious relationship with our town, but that's where we are. Um, <coughs> I, I believe that it's out of our hands, is that correct, Mike, that we can't really address this because it has gone to the selectmen? Well, it's now a legal matter. Um, and our town council is talking to Johnson. No, he isn't. He hasn't returned our council's call. Mm, they spoke today. Okay. Well, that's about two weeks late. It was removed in terms of dealing with um, that end of the road. It was removed from the building committee and moved on to the selectmen where it involved town land, which didn't directly impact the building. I mean, we have tried to address your concerns. I mean, that's something that we have always kept in the forefront, even as it went on to the selectmen, because we are very concerned for you also. Um, this is that not something very that's being for a while and yeah. then the bottom fell out yeah I, you know there there were just some things that came to light in terms of certain equipment that the fire department has that caused the chain it didn't get new equipment this no, year. no no i didn't say new just it, they, it's right been there you know for a you're year, right for a year. you're right for a year Ellie, can, yeah. you, can i have a, can I you ask a question yeah um can we have just clarification on the width of the uh, of the road because i believe that the pavement is 10 feet. Ten, right. Pavement's, pavement's right. 10 And then it's a, uh, it's then there's a shoulder area. Three feet. Um, three, three feet, feet on the other side. side. So so feet 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 feet. 16 feet of the but, land. So, so I guess the question is, because I, I just read that on, on the thing that there's three feet of, of gravel or, or on the sides. Um, and uh, maybe what we can do, Carl, is to take a look and and chief, if we actually, I mean, the, the purpose of the of the edge, I guess, should be clarified as to why do we need that extra edge? Is that just for making sure that there's clearance so that mirrors or something don't get hit? So possibly in some areas we don't need to have gravel on the side where it's um, near um, next to their property. So uh, um, maybe we just have the road there and no gravel edges because 10 foot, you can drive right up 10 foot and there's nothing going to be on either side of that because it's pretty clear in there. I mean, that one tree you're going to have to um, prune, but uh, um, is, that, is that something that... Um, but it will be driven <coughs> by the attorney. We certainly, know, but, yeah, we but, certainly will be yeah. um, open to, to listening. But I, wanna, uh, I just came tonight. Right, to we, we, we have not... Um, forsaken you so to speak we're waiting to find sure out what stands it, it's not you know I don't I know some of our meetings have been televised lately but it's certainly been a topic of conversation and concern for us mm -hmm. so we're waiting to find out exactly where the town stands in terms of how we can address it but we do want to keep it as pristine as we can on Thursday I hope that I will be informed of where else it's going to come up because that is what has fallen through. Right. And, and, and as soon as we find out, we will. My son can come up from New York. I think that's going to be a meeting with the selectmen also. So we'll try and also follow up for you to make sure that you are informed when that happens. Can I just? Yes, Mike. Actually, 
when I spoke to the lawyer today, uh, the attorney for Toronto, which, who was representing the Johnsons and, and our legal counsel, had an agreement in principle. Uh, attorney Serrano just wants to walk the site with the engineers, and they have Courtney's contact information. And, and as once once the attorney walks the site, um, once you know, our attorney walks the site, yes, he's he's requested that, and uh, Courtney is is the um, going to be. Uh, taking them there. She's available tomorrow. She's available on thir Thursday. Tomorrow is Thursday. I think um, he's coming up on Thursday. Tomorrow's my Thursday. Tomorrow's okay. Well, she's available both days. Uh, and I think Attorney Scarano has been informed of that. So we're, we're working with him. Well, I'm glad to hear that because when I talked to him this morning, that was not the case. So I'm glad that something has happened today. Okay. Well, I am sorry it has come to a contentious situation, but it really feels that way at this point. I hope it's not. I hope that we can work this out, you know, to, to your satisfaction in the towns. And thank you for your comments. Thank you. Would Is anyone there anything else, else going to happen here tonight that I need to hear? No. What's on the agenda? <laughs> it's, the plans are coming up on the agenda. We will yeah. be discussing the road. <clears throat> we will be discussing the road. Yes, during the meeting, but not yet. So if you'd like to move back to ahead. there. Um, thank you. Is it, there anyone else from the public who would like to make a statement? Okay. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, I'd like to approve the invoices. We have several. One minutes. is minutes. oh, the minutes. We skipped the minutes. <coughs> Anyone care to make a motion to approve the minutes for September twenty fourth, two thousand and thirteen? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I don't have anything. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Carrie abstained. Motion carries. Okay. And then the invoices we have five hundred dollars from Unibank. Mike, I don't know what this is for. Here to renew the uh, short term note. Okay. That's the fee. We have more printing fees from Andrew Johnson Company for eight thousand one hundred and fifty two dollars and twenty six cents. We have an invoice from DRA for $162,000. Municipal $13,115. Those three add up to $183,267.26 plus the separate $500 for the bank. So can I hear a motion <coughs> Any, to approve the bills, the invoices? Motion to approve the bills. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. I just <laughs> like to bring up, kind of, uh, add to what Mrs. Johnson was saying that I was told early on that we would follow a process where we would work through the chairs rather than working through the consultants or DRA if we had any questions. So I'm confused about the process, how the whole uh, new road got initiated because we had taken a vote on a 10-foot road. You know, I'm confused too. And uh, Jeff and Rob took it on their own initiative to, to go to the chief to change no, the road. No, they design. went through the chairs. They did but not go on their own. That happened during a meeting. It didn't go through. But it, we were no. given permission to have right. Go. They went through the chairs to do that. They didn't go through the, the committee though. No, they went through the chairs. Okay. Yeah. As just as exact, exactly what you said, that people well, go through us for permission. And this to was a site issue, and I'm on the sub subgroup, and I was never notified. So, I, I, you know, you know, you know her, her, Mrs. Johnson questions are kind of valid on how this changed, because uh, I'm confused, too. I mean, and well, it went from a 12, I mean, on that meeting, it went from a 12-foot road down to a 10-foot road. That's what we did. 
Rob and I. That was the and purpose Pat of it. was there too. So, so because we didn't want it as wide as that, well, so, so we had it reduced. Well, the Concom <laughs> voted to approve it. That's why they're doing a modification. And I don't know what led to the process of you guys going through the chairs without discussing it with the committee for your reasons. It just, just. Well, the whole thing was discussed at the at a at a meeting. It's just um, um, going to the uh, um, chief was uh, was decided by the uh, um, chairs that we didn't want to have a lot of people there. We wanted a couple people. Well, that's not a very so democratic we process. I think it should have well, brought up right before committee meeting. Still. Right. And just, I think the whole thing came about because there was one piece of fire equipment that they had that we weren't, you know, we, we didn't realize and it was what caused the road that needed to be looked at to be wider. So that, you know, that falls on us that there was, you know, something out there that we didn't realize. So we, so it successfully went from 12 feet down to 10 feet and then it was all discussed at a meeting following that. And then the police chief was actually in the meeting. So that, that all did happen. Yeah. I mean, we didn't decide um, and, and make it um, a fait accompli that, that, the, that the road was going to change. Um, but we wanted to find the information along with the design team and the chief as to why we needed something so wide. And in fact, we didn't, and we reduced it. And the only place that it stays 12 feet is up further on um, way up on the road where it starts to a curve right up by the school itself. So, uh, um, so I thought that was very successful um, on that. So, um, and now, now we have to, you know, just discuss this last little bit of issue of, of the apron. <coughs> All right. But I, <coughs> but I hear you. I don't. I don't. Yeah. It, I'm, you I'm know not, I wasn't in that quickly. part of the decision, but I, I hear you. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so would, all right, so everyone, right, approve the invoices? Aye. Aye. Okay. Abstain, motion carries. So please see that there are two that need to be signed when you send these around. together um, I think what I'd like to do Carl is actually have you go first and let's move the Johnson and property up to the first item so that mrs. Johnson can move the shoe with sure. too. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the uh, issues there are that the revised plan has uh, been uh, resubmitted to the Conservation Commission and actually to their peer reviewers um, uh, that was the last week um, uh, so that they'd have time to get comments back prior to the hearing that's this uh, Thursday night so that's what's on the agenda for um, Conservation Commission is the modification to the plan and there are a few minor modifications elsewhere to the to the plans that they approved remember those plans were originally prepared like in April I think that went to Conservation Commission do you know what time you're on the agenda I don't know if they've seen it. I heard it was going to be yeah. fairly late. That, that's the word I got. Okay. Uh, that it was going to be later on in the meeting, yeah. but I don't have a specific time. Um, so there were a few minor changes, and as we've said all along, that it, it was our intent to refile um, as a matter of just sort of being conscientious because, you know, a few radii had changed on driveways and things like that. And generally, all of the moves have been to have less um, impervious. <laughs> site roadways have gotten a little bit narrower or curves have gotten a little bit tighter and things like that and obviously on this um, this uh, path being still pervious pavement it, there's no more impermeable so um, uh, we just touched base today with Conservation Commission with Steve the agent and he hadn't heard back yet from the um, from the reviewers but um, again he said in terms of all the information needed from the design team he was all set in that regard did you submit a own m plan um i don't know that that was part of the resubmission george um on this specifically they they redid calculations and, and right. we have the documents um 
Oh, it's, a whole, oh, it's a whole different design. So uh, you would think it would be a different O and M plan. No yeah, problem. I'm not sure that um, the conservation commission was concerned about the O and M. Obviously, uh, the owner of the town is concerned about that. Right. I don't know if the conservation <laughs> commission um, had required that as part of their information. It usually goes with the stormwater <coughs> calculations. And O and M plan is usually attached. Maybe it, maybe it's in there. And I'm not aware of it. So sorry, um, but we already had. Um, you know, uh, pervious pavement elsewhere on the site. So, in that sense, there's already, if that was a requirement, it was already in there how to maintain that. Um, you know, the whole playground behind the school is is um, the same kind of pavement. So, the same um, uh, maintenance procedures would be needed there. I don't know that there's anything new. Uh, Are you going to put this up on an easel so everybody can see? Or I might have to there? hold it up today. Yeah, I mean, the layout hasn't changed since the last, other than what, what Jeff mentioned, that at our last meeting, the uh, the road was asked to be 12 feet wide, and since then, uh, it's been narrowed to 10, except at the curve um, at the very top where it joins the driveway. But other than that, the alignment is still the same, and the um, grading is, is still the same. It's <coughs> all less than 10 percent. It's actually less than 9 percent, I believe, um, at the steepest portions there. And the curves have all been laid out, um, you know, to accommodate the uh, fire equipment, um, both to our engineer satisfaction and to the fire chief's satisfaction too. Mm -hmm. He sent us a PDF. He sent us a PDF. Uh, is that was that the only? Of this, this is this is what was discussed with the fire with the chief. There's a different submission. I emailed you a copy of this okay, because I got, I Courtney got that. sent right. She sent it around today, so I just sent it through email so you could look at it before the meeting. But well, I had trouble looking at it because there was no legend to tell me what some of the right. That, were. Did you bring a few hard copies of it? Uh, this is one of them. Here, you're welcome to take it with you. So the yellow W is that limit of work? Mm -hmm. Limit of work. Mm -hmm. Show the wall. The stone wall. <coughs> you know I, I got a golf ball from there. Maybe it'd be good to just go through it. <coughs> just walk us right up through it and tell people what it is. Um, well, you can put one on one side, one on the other. How about, how about, how about, how about, So Elm Street is here. The driveway around the school, the uh, drop-off loop is here. Uh, the Johnson's property is here. Um, the alignment of the road, uh, starting at the, the curve here, it, it, it's perpendicular to Elm Street. And then it basically is a straight shot um, up until it, it comes close to this wetland. And that's where it turns to be now perpendicular to to this road. So in essence, there's a straight shot here and a straight shot here, one curve in the road, and then you know the appropriate widenings at the bottoms for, for the vehicles to make the swing. So from here to this point right here, it's 10 feet wide. It does have shoulders, gravel shoulders, uh, but the, the uh, pervious pavement is 10 feet wide. And then uh, from that uh, point there uh, up to the uh, widening at this point is 12 feet wide. Um, it, it, there are no walls involved, no retaining walls involved needed. The grading was able to be done by moving it away a little bit from, from the existing wall here, such that um, no retaining walls are needed. Um, and we can maintain, as we said, no more than, I think the vertical plan is here. I think it's like less than 9%, uh, 8 uh, four, I think is the steep. Uh, the um, other refinement that was asked for at our last committee meeting was instead of, um, you know, we need to restrict traffic here, and originally we had two posts and a chain with a sign on it that said authorized vehicle only, um, it was suggested that we should consider a, a swing gate 
And so the, the plans now show a, a swing gate with a locking arm. So when it's in the open position, it has something to lock oh, against. So that's just this right here? Yes. And, and, and that, and that is Mrs. Johnson. That's at the, at the end of your project. It's in the woods. So you it's won't be woods. seeing it. It's, right. Yeah, it's, it's right yeah. at this point in the woods. Because th this path is going to function as a pedestrian and bike path as well, we want people to be able to walk and, and ride Get their bike it. while the gate is closed. So that's why there's a little um, bulb there where the pavement so bulges out at, at that point and again up at the top too. Because again, we don't want cars to come from the driveway uh, drop, drop off circle and head down there. So there's a gate at the top too. So but the road's wide enough there that you could ride your bike and walk around it. And sorry, it is sorry. locked. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were finished. Yeah. I'm jumping the gun. I'm sorry. It is, it is locked, you know, um, with a padlock, and it will have a, with the equivalent of a Knox box, the same that's on the building, a, a box where the fire department has the key, so they can access that lock in an emergency. Or Peter, uh, Durkee, and Highway Department, likewise, to plow it, can access that lock to swing it open and, and position it in the open position. And so it plows through. So the two saw lines represent the... Uh, pavement in the middle is the water pipe mm -hmm. yeah the, the w line yeah, yeah. okay yeah, there's also a center line there that's just the, the layout line i think what too, are these little little circles that go that's a revision clouds to let the contractor know we made that was made an agenda change. item and we, that we made a change so that's really to call yeah, his that, attention yeah that that's the so-called cloud <laughs> that's a courtesy so that somebody looking at the drawing knows what's changed from the last version of the drawing so we clouded the whole thing since the whole thing changed from what was originally uh, six feet wide with you know wide shoulders to now it's uh, ten feet wide there. These this erosion control line is, it shows yep. one shows two inside the limit uh, limit of work line right here. What do you mean it shows two? It, on each side there's erosion control. Okay. Right. Well, what are these here? Are they, is this the wall? No, those are additional, these are additional changes. This whole cloud is indicating that revision. Yeah, that squiggly line this this one. encompasses yeah, that's the whole thing. What is this here? That's all clouding and that's the revision cloud that identifies. To show that the entire path, changed. George, okay. is subject to the revision. So it, it's a big circle around the entire yeah, work. That's what that is. Here. So it, there's no activity there. It's not a tree line. <laughs> Or anything. I thought it looked like the same as the erosion control. Yeah, it, and, and so I'm thinking, <laughs> are you putting erosion control I can outside see, the wall too? Yeah, I can see how that's a, 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 um, a question. But no, the, the erosion control is inside the wall. Okay, so, so yeah. you didn't mark, you didn't put the wall in here, did you? The existing stone walls? Yeah. It's they are there. They're really light. It's hard to, to see. They're basically on the property lines, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, the limit of work line. They, in fact, they may be obliter obliterated by the limit of work line. Right. That's why you can't see them. But that heavy LOW line is the is basically the property line, which is the stone wall. I think it varies a little bit in a couple places where the wall isn't. You know, it's an old farmer's wall, sort of. It doesn't exactly follow. But yeah, because I I did get a call from a member of the historic town historic commission asking if with an increase activity up to 16 feet, would that damage the historic walls? Would mm -hmm. construction uh, activities be able to maintain the integrity of the, the walls? Mm -hmm. that, that's the intent. Yep. I, I don't think there's anywhere that, that um, the wall needs to be modified because, again, it's right on the property line. We're not changing the grade at the property line, and so the, the wall will remain. We, as Jeff mentioned, there are a couple trees that have to be pruned. Sometimes the trees are right in the wall. They, they've sort of grown up. Um, right next to the wall. That may be the only time they're disturbed is if those trees are disturbed. Yeah, we agreed to trim <laughs> up to 13 feet. For yeah, vertically purposes. too. The branches need so to be so trimmed. Trucks can get in and out. So we got a, uh, a section. Of subterranean layers going in. Would that affect uh, any trees that might be? Off-site from falling in, if we uh, <coughs> going down that far, uh, affect the rooting system at all. Um, well, the root system is. Yeah, not that we're aware of. I mean, there, there are, like we said, a couple of trees that will have to be pruned within the, the right. boundaries um, of the work area, but nothing beyond is noted to be, you know, altered. I, I don't know that. Uh, 
And if they get to the point Anyone's judge where they have that. to, for whatever reason, for great purposes or whatever, if they had to use a, a drag box, they'd have to use a drag box. If they get, to, if they start dancing around, you know, six feet, that's where you've got to use a drag box anyway, which is going to present protect the bankings from obviously any any disturbance. So, and they'll be using a drag box again. They'll be filling that very quickly based on that section there, because the water main goes down there. So when they do it, they're going to come in and get down to the bottom of the water main, get the water main, get the sub base for the water main, and then build your layers up, move the drag box, keep on going, so you're protecting the bankings. Are you just asking that <coughs> to make sure that no roots are disturbed that'll affect the trees? Is that yeah? I wonder if there's not a wide cut. Yeah. So you know. yeah, because you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, in construction, that if you cut some roots that are close, then you know, the trees are more apt to, you know, fall or whatever. So I think. And Rob had mentioned at one time there was a way of pruning them early that root, might yeah, help. Yeah, we do right. own that. Yeah. Again, those are for trees that are either right on the property line or right. within the property line. That we we do that. own that. Yes. Yeah. Especially down near the street, uh, uh, on the far side of the of the roadway, there are some trees that are virtually right in the the uh, stone wall, the property line. And the idea is to uh, root prune those um, so that um, when the work is put in place, the tree has already sort of died back because the as I, I understand when you cut the roots, sort of the tree you know recedes above to match that. And so uh, rather than shock and all at once, you, right. you do that you early it, right. and, and then you do the rest of the work. <coughs> and it has to be done by a registered arborist, I believe, right. is what and, the and I assume require. that if anything happened to a tree that they thought may be in jeopardy of falling down, they would let us know, correct? You know, sure. If, We're going to have people there, you know, okay. all the time. The work is going on if there's anything that looks uh, in jeopardy Questionable. there. Questionable. Yeah. I, I, I noticed, too, that, you know, the road, the road kind of bends down here to its... To it down 106 Elm, and there is access from uh, Elm Street to get to the second lot of Old Cartway LLC. Um, yeah, there's another little sliver of property next to the town's property there. Okay, because the, I wonder if they had access if this construction is taking place on the, the owners. Property? Are there any? Because I don't see any. No, it's, it's totally not. within the town's property. Yeah. Okay. The proposed work. Yeah. Again, you may be confused by that bubble line, George. I'm, you know, that that's just a circle, a drafting convention. No, no, I see. I see the lot line here, and then I see there's a lot line that goes down through here. It looks like there's like a a right of way it, for this person to get back. It, to it may lot. be. I don't know if it's exactly a right of way, but there's a thin piece of property there parallel to the town's property, right. Yeah, but usually, none of our work is happening on that. I mean, usually plans have reference plans on a, on a cover page showing, so if anybody wants to look and see if, the, if, there's a plan, if they have a plan showing. There, there is a survey that's part of our submittal that has that, you know, the existing conditions um, does, does have that uh, information. Here, you know, it, it shows up here as part of that 106 R Elm Street. Okay. You know, there's no break, so it, it is shown in common ownership. That little piece down there. Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, yes. On this, you know, back to this uh, um, uh, gravel. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, is there any, uh, well, the uh, um, fire chief and I um, had a conversation on this. And down along the, the Johnson's um, property, from the back, back of their property all the way to the yeah. front, I would say, um, uh, whether, whether we need to have the uh, um, gravel. gravel at all, mm -hmm. being such a, a, a uh, contained area. I mean, it's wide open there, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And you can stay right on the road pretty easily, and get rid of the gravel. Um, he and I don't really see a reason for it, and I'm just wondering if there's a design reason other than um, see later up when yeah, it gets softer up ahead, you really need it. it it's really for so, when you're in the woods. So what to I keep would propose, any growth, yeah. You know, so what I would propose road. is that we um, 
delete the uh, um, exposed nature of the uh, of the uh, um, gravel mm -hmm. um, from the road on up to the point at which we put our 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 gate, gate. <laughs> yeah. and then from the gate on is when we have that mm -hmm. and that'll help the look um, up at your place it'll help the look and I'm just told that the Red Sox just won the game so yay two in a row yeah I know I did too one nothing go Sox um, anyways and then and then um, it would also look better for the historic nature of the um, Elm Street itself, it and mm -hmm. um, and I think that it will work out for everybody there. Um, so I would propose that as as a change, and I, I don't know if we is that does that go or, in as a change order if we if we agree to do that, or would that not really matter? Well, well it, it is a change. Uh, well, it's, it's a good change. It, it may be <laughs> somewhat <laughs> insubstantial right. to right. the contractor. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll work it in with our sign. Because if it's not gravel, okay. then it's loam and seed. Yeah. You know. Okay. So. So do, do you other, need a vote to approve other, that or any other discussion no, I just on ask, Do other members feel the same on that one issue? I have one other issue, too, so I reserve the right for the floor. But uh, um, what do people think about that? that oh, yeah, no, I think, I think it's, it's reasonable great. to me. I think so. As long as you're sure, for drainage purposes, we're covered. You yeah, know? No I don't know of any reason, because um, it's not a swale. It, you yeah, know, we've got right. permeal um, pavement there. Yeah, that, got to and, the Chief, you are, you're good with oh. that? Okay. I guess I didn't voice my opinion. I voted dull last time. My my main reason for voting against the plan is that I don't, I'm not confident that the town will maintain the pervious pavement. And if it's not, if it's not maintained, yeah. then that will just act like a piece of <laughs> piece of asphalt. So, well, that's okay. that's my reason. But so I hear this that. change. This change, <coughs> if it's better for Mr. Johnson, it's good. But okay. in, in yeah. my opinion, I'm not one way or the other. Okay, mm -hmm. so. So can we then proceed with that, if that's the uh, um, general feeling on that? And, and then the second piece is this gate on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned in the email or something I saw that uh, um, there's a possibility of having a double gate, and uh, which I think would be if you take Maybe a look. opposed to one large? Yeah. Instead of, well, you have one large one and then one smaller one. Or, or in this case, it's not even that far, I guess. So you'd, all you have to do because uh, we're doing this with a bike path too. All you have to do is restrict, have enough to restrict access of vehicles. But you want to leave enough so that you can get a person through in a stroller without mm -hmm. having to go around anything or something like that. So I would propose that we have it so that um, it, it takes on um, all but, you know, if the trail is 10 feet, maybe down to allowing uh, four foot width clear, and then, uh, and then have that gate so that it's lockable because you can still lock those on a swing arm and have, a, have the lock right on the, on the butt hinge portion of it and um, have that same Knox box like you're talking about and everything. You probably even still want to have that bollard. But there's no post in the middle of the path? No. no. And what go, keeps the arm there? What keeps the arm there is that um, it's on a hinge, so that lets it go, but then you can have a, uh, a, bar. a slight outrigger, um, a, a flat plate, actually, a with, a, with a hole in it and, then it, and then you just slide down a, a post in it Close to the hinge. Bit holds it. it. It only has to be like this far off of the post. You know, it's not that much, and just that pin holds it. And you can and you can have with that pin um, a lock, lock. underneath mm -hmm. it so that they can get in and out. And that'll stop that, and it'll stop any vehicles from going. I probably suggest you keep the bollard on the other side so that people don't, don't stop drive around. around it. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. um, but I think that would be better for mm -hmm. people so they can um, literally go down and use the trail. Um, up to the school um, and back, and I do that on both sides. Would be my proposal on that. So the way this, I want to make sure I understand. Is some type of pole would be on the side of the road so that the this gate can swing. Sure. Or is you it still have so basically is, a swing gate. So this it just is your doesn't path. go the full <coughs> width of the road. Yep. So, so this is your path. You can ride That's your bike one straight. bollard. Right. That's another bollard, and this is this is the swing gate itself right across here that would go like this and then this could be uh, pushed back and allow a truck to come through and it can be locked right here so that it oh, can't okay. move but it gives enough room for people to go through without having to go around things and everything yeah. like that so, yeah, that so makes sense. works really well you on trails. four feet for that I would say four or five feet and then that would I mean, be five feet might five be better six. but okay. I wouldn't go any more than five 
I wouldn't go any more than five. Four wheelers. I wouldn't go any more than five clear from the end of the pole to the bollard. It's going to be a little play in it. So make sure that, right. you yeah. know, and your bollard's going to be a little bit off of the, off the, road, of the right. surface. So, um, so you want to make sure that there's right. enough right. there. And this okay. is a gate that's going to be made out of steel or something, steel. so yeah. people yeah, can't jump on it and throw it off right. kilter. Right. No, it's strong okay. in that regard, yeah. George? The, the only last question I have is, I don't know if it's a matter of semantics, but for the plane calling it an access road, um, does that require any, uh, that definition, Be calling it a drive? Should it be called a drive or a way or a? Are you calling it a road? It shouldn't be a road. It shouldn't be a road. It's not it's a road. <laughs> so that'll have to just be semantically. Good, good spotting, George. <laughs> I totally agree with George. Yeah. We've yeah. never called it a road. We've always called it a drive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, I mean, people, I mean, there's drives and lane and courts and. Right. There's they, a difference. They, 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 they are specified in the town. Yep. Good uh, catch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It goes in. I might not want to call it a, a lane or a court. Do you have one? All right, so right. this is what we're looking at. We took his. So, who, yeah. Who so, one? yeah, I have one. So, in this, in this diagram, in this diagram, you can see that if yeah. this pole had not, a not hole road, in it just, that yeah. lined who up with this, yeah. that when it swung to a closed position, that bolt can go down through it. This diagram isn't quite right because otherwise it won't close all the way. But, uh, but you can do that and have that. That pipe go down through it, that bar go down through it, and, and lock it off. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> and then you just don't have anything on the other side. And these are very common in the uh, um, National Grid has these on their um, uh, trails all the time for their own people, and uh, and then it gets modified for biking to open up an area. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. So. Um, so before we move on, Carl, would you like a vote of support for that, or does that is it not required? For that modification yeah. Sure. And the road. And the road. And the road. That's right. We didn't vote on the road. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I'll let, yes. Sure, so I'll publish. Sure. Yep. Uh, where so. can I see the, something was mentioned about this surfacing is somewhere else. Where can I see it? I would like to see the proposal. An example of it? Yeah, is that surface being used somewhere else in town? Or I would really, very like to see that. Well, you, University of Hampshire. Well, <laughs> UNH and also over in the, um, that, uh, at, what's the name of that pond again? Walden, Walden, Walden Pond. pond. Walden. Their uh, parking lot. The IRS in Andover, too. Oh, the IRS has that, too? I think so. It, who is it? Who's telling us about Can that? Can anyone get to it? No, you can't get in the gate. Yeah, okay. You might be able to get in, but you'll never get out. Yeah. <laughs> you pay your taxes, though. So it's darker than I know. They're not working right now. They so, would be very suspect of anyone around there, so be careful. Yeah. <laughs> it really, to the naked eye, looks like pavement. It just has some openings in it that let the water go through. But unless you really get down close and look at it, it, it looks like pavement. It looks like pavement, but you know, like you know the old briquettes of uh, shredded wheat? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I'm serious, that's what it looks like. It's, it's kind of more open um, of a pavement um, system. But it looks, you know, if you, for most bad. people, you just look like at it. it it just looks like asphalt, and uh, um, but when you really get close to it, it's it's a little bit more open in there that, that allows water down through. So the idea is it's not going to pool on top. Well, there's no. pervious pavement with asphalt, and then uh, isn't there yeah, concrete, concrete that, also? That, that's a different system. It's a different system, though. What's it called? Pervious, pervious pavement. pavement. Or porous pavement. Or porous, or porous, porous pavement, pavement. Yeah. yeah. one of the other things. This is my daughter, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi. 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 My question was answered about the wall. Thank you. Okay. Okay, okay. so sure. I'll entertain a motion to make changes at the lower end of the road bordering the Johnson property to eliminate the the 
gravel Exposed on gravel. the shoulders. Yeah. All the way up to where the fence is, to where the gate the is. The gate, up to the gate. Right. And um, can we tag them both in together? And to, yeah, I don't see and to And to create the uh, um, uh, uh, gate so that um, uh, five feet um, is left between the uh, um, bollard and the, and the uh, um, end of the uh, gate itself, giving you at least four feet on the, on the paved area, mm -hmm. um, top and bottom. For pedestrians to get through, so, and so that's we'll, not too much. We don't have no. to worry about other vehicle. No, those are like no, any six. Well, those you get no matter you know what okay. you do. But six foot, um, uh, you want to stay above six, or vehicles are above six foot really to okay. get through. So I guess I, guess I can hold that. Okay. <laughs> the way it's worded that way, yeah. Okay. okay. Wait, anyone can hear a second? Okay. <clears throat> any other discussion on this? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Great. Great. Aye. Is there any other information that you would like to give us that will have anything to do with Mrs. Johnson's property? Or the access drive. Carl? Or the, the access, access drive? Um, I think that's it for that. Okay. So we did. Um, what about the can? Okay. That. The new gate. All right. So we've already talked about the new gate, but we didn't talk about signage. Would you like to mention the signage? Um, well, there's opportunities for signage on the gate, and then we just wanted to clarify a location because there are a couple different signs mentioned last time. One mentioned no sand, and one mentioned no unauthorized vehicles. Three, I, I don't remember the third one. No parking. No parking. Yeah. On. Right. So. We wanted to clarify locations for that when we generate that proposal request to the contractor that we have them in the right spots. Mm -hmm. So well, there is required requirements in the town code that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. mm -hmm. so I know. Fire lane. You fire know what? The check it no, Could no, we? it wasn't fire, just fire lanes. I think we have to. We'd have to ask you to maybe check with the police and fire departments first and get their input, okay. and um, report back yeah. to us on what they recommend. For the no sand. That one, let's talk to Peter. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I think in terms of what signage would be needed, I'd, I'd like their recommendation. You can ask them right now. Yeah, but we want the police also. So. Wherever that code language was. I don't know who oversees that. Is that a bylaw or is it in the zoning? Is it zoning or a bylaw? Bylaws? Okay. So whatever that says, that they got language. Yeah, and remember the only place yeah, you, the only place you need it is is down at the bottom because everything else is gated off, right? No, you need it top two, I think. Well, you don't want people yeah. parking not in front of it. it. You're right. Nothing, nothing, gate, nothing inside the gate. The nothing in between the gates. You don't need anything in between the gates. I no. wouldn't think. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, I think you guys yeah, need I, to being respectful to the property. And Right. Yeah. I think we need to know what the bylaw is, yeah. I guess, yeah, I too. Yep. I agree. I, I don't want to make a recommendation <laughs> that goes against it. Yeah, and I would just <coughs> check with police and fire in case there is anything additional or okay. something that they would require. We'll check on that. That's not urgent anyways. We're okay. Point, so we can no. All right. So, so good then. The sign. George, my reading of the bylaw the by, 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 by the code says it was relevant to, as it relates to, so access, access and fire where it hits <coughs> a thoroughfare where it hurts the main road. So it's not that you have signage up the road. It's a, a, a signage at both ends of the road on the roads that run perfectly. You know the CONCOM yeah, con meeting is this week and they're going to be talking about the property? <laughs> the Conservation Commission meeting? Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you for coming. All right. Okay. All right. So let's move back up to um, the pre construction meeting and we'll have you go at the end or do you want to go first? Or? Well, it doesn't make a difference. We were all, everybody was there. Uh, the meeting, the pre construction meeting, there were minutes that were, were taken. That basically is where you, the contractor brings in all of the file subbids and any of the non file subbids. And you just go through the ground rules. You, know, you go through the contract status, use of power, uh, the game, you know, the game plan and the rules and regulations on site, the Corey checks and so forth. And school department was here. 
Uh, Mike Farrell was here, Chuck and I were here, and Joan was here, uh, Carol was here. So again, like I said, there was quite a contingent. It was held in this room, mm -hmm. and it was pretty much full. Michelle and I actually came. That's right. I, came, I came for about 20 time. minutes, and then I went back to work. Yeah. So I we're just, just really walking through them. the rules and regs and the specifications, and I guess if anybody wanted copies of the minutes of the, the agenda, we'd be happy to provide right. those. Uh, but again, I was just really get acquainted and set the game plan and the rules and regs for the process. Uh, any quite specific questions about it? Uh, and it's the start of weekly job meetings yeah. that are going to be held now on uh, Wednesdays. Where, where do no, they no. meet? The, where do you meet? Well, usually in the tomorrow. trailer. When there's a trailer oh. uh, set up, there isn't one as yet. It'll, uh, be here, it'll be here tomorrow. So Mike has made arrangements for us to use this building at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And when will they start fencing and everything? The, well, the schedule, moving over to the schedule, uh, oh, they okay. sent us a, a prelim. And uh, the erosion control is starting tomorrow. Uh, that control has to happen initially because the conservation office is going to open look at it. Right. And is they're going to start the erosion control. Steve will come on Friday, which is actually perfect timing because our meeting is on uh, Tuesday night, the 17th. So he'll come over. Hopefully everything is all set. We, they're looking to mobilize the, the equipment, the clearing equipment, this week. Uh, to get the equipment there. They can't start anything, but they want to get it there. And then assuming they're all set to go, and Steve gives them the okay shortly after, I'm guessing it'll be Monday. They say right after Steve gets done on, on, on Friday, they would start right away. My guess would be that they would probably start on Monday. And then they would start to clear. As the clearing starts to, to obviously move ahead, and the stumping starts to move ahead, the fencing will start to follow. You need to get some of the clearing done so you're not disturbing the fencing as it goes in on the property line. So all of that will start at the same time. And they're very, you know, they're very ambitious. They want to go out and tackle the, uh, the building pad right away because they like to get in and start foundations as soon as possible. Uh, so when will the, the public be Sarah. forbidden from yeah. entering the property? Well, theoretically, once they take possession of the site, theoretically that's when that, that's when they would take it and obviously that's off and they would be prohibiting anybody from accessing through. There's been a lot of talk about the cross-country team and so forth, and we talked to Carol and, and Bright's been involved, and they're trying to work out an accommodation to be able to, to handle Finish that. The but really, we'd like it in Bright's hands because at this yeah. point, it's a question of A, liability, because mm -hmm. anybody that gets hurt, it's their site. B, it's a matter of you know the equipment coming in and clearing and where they're going to start to clear. Again, that's their call. So again, like I said, they are trying to work and they are trying to accommodate a schedule that will allow them to run at least one more race there. So uh, that's what they're in the process of doing. And as tomorrow morning's meeting, obviously there'll be an update as to how those communications are going. Okay. okay. Um, just because I don't remember from the pre-construction meeting, have parameters been set? Have you worked with um, Dr. Tanner on what time the trucks can come in and what time they oh, yeah, can come in? That's all established, is it, yeah. Is that all it's done? It's all set, okay. yeah, yeah. It's all per the yeah. spec. Everything was written into the spec. All of this in information and investigation was done okay. ahead so, of time. So there are, you know, the, now to say that there aren't going to be trucks that are going to come right. down from out of state that don't know the regulations when they get here. Will we find the truck there some morning at 6? Probably, because it's impossible to get information out to secondary vendors. But they've all been told to notify everybody so that the normal everyday traffic will be well aware. Concrete poles will be obviously structured around that. So again, like I say, the game plan is, is pretty well in place. Okay. So if and there's then, ever, okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. So can you just make a call to Dr. Tanner just so she knows when all this is starting? We keep, we, oh, yeah, we sure he knows. knows. She has, been okay. Touch with yeah. As a matter of fact, there, there, was, there was one request uh, to expedite getting the trailers there, getting the communications going and so right. forth. There was one request. We looked at the site after the yep. pre-construction conference. We went to the site. And there was a spot just off the pavement <coughs> on the school side that appeared that maybe that would work. Well, it didn't work because it was going to be in the way and provide some interference with the buses okay. coming in. Okay. So that was that was next. There was some communication. So the communications will be ongoing, and they're okay. made aware that they better stay behind that fence. The only flexibility they have is they've been told that off hours are on a Saturday. There is some clearing up toward the left side of that parking lot. If they can get in there and off hours and clear that while they're clearing people in here. You know, get it all done at one time. Okay. That's the game plan. It's, it's a good, aggressive game plan. We are waiting for several things. We're waiting for their schedule of values. The schedule of values is where the contractor takes his price, and now he breaks his price down into the 33 divisions on the contract, 
and he identifies in each division who's an MBE, who's a WBE. We have unit prices that are in the contract that he'll be putting into those various sections. That's critical because when we submit that to MSBA, they'll rewrite the PFA, and the PFA will go down for everybody because the job is $4 million under the PFA budget that was approved by MSBA. They will rewrite the whole thing. Georgetown's going to save money. The state's going to save money. And we will have everything packaged in the right categories mm -hmm. so that when we submit the invoices, they go through without any aggravation. Because if they're not broken down appropriately, then you end up with the questions. And when you end up with questions, bills don't get processed. So we want to be very careful that everything gets broken down. Chuck does a great job in identifying coding, and again, like I said, as long as it's broken down up front, it, it, it'll, it'll go through without a major major hassle. Now, have we renegotiated with MSBA yet? No, the no, MSBA won't that. renegotiate anything. There's we're no waiting negotiation. For the, we're waiting for the <laughs> yeah, negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> but what will happen is they're waiting for the contract breakdown, which Braid is preparing. They'll take that, they'll submit it to us. We want to make sure that obviously everything is in balance. Because if they were to put more stuff into the site, then we pay 100% of those dollars. So we want to make sure everything is in balance. We've already talked to them about making sure that everything is in balance. Okay. Once that's all set to everybody's satisfaction, the RA and ourselves, and it matches up with the estimates that we did, then, of course, that'll go to MSBA. They will take that information, and then they will just simply recompute. No right. negotiation. They will recompute, and they'll send you a new agreement and say, this is the now the final agreement. Okay. Until we finish the job, in which time, at the end of the job, they'll come in and do the same thing again. When they do the audit, if we come in under, which we hope we do, and we hope we don't use a major part of the contingency, they'll rewrite it again. But we won't save any money on construction side. That's a done Maybe deal. Any contracts that sign to sign. Oh, right. What you save money on is you have you have the contingencies. Right. There's contingencies. You know, there's testing budgets. There's yeah. our, ours is a is a floating budget. Uh, but again, those that have hard contracts like the general contractor, which is That's the biggest it. cost. Sometimes there's allowances, the cost, you know, stuff like that. Whatever yeah. is a change order will be coming out of contingency, and we hope we use as little as possible out of the contingency. Right. All right. So do you have, um, do you have a question? Well, um, it was a question of uh, do we know when the uh, groundbreaking ceremony is? We're going to get to that. Okay. Um, do you have any other? Yeah, one other thing. Any other? Yeah, there was... Uh, I, I'm not sure everybody's aware. No, you're, I believe you're aware. There was a protest by the second yes. fire protection contract, and it, it's based on what he carried versus what the low fire, uh, uh, fire protection submitter carried, which came to a head when Braid started to inquire about the water distribution on site. Mm -hmm. And there was a difference of opinion as to how much was owned by the low file submitter. Braid made a call to the low file submitter to indicate that they expected them to do some of the, the other <laughs> water, water main work on the site. They indicated that they only had the fire protection work. The contention between the second bidder and Braid is, well, actually, they should have carried all of that work the way it's worded, and we had a hearing at the, uh, at the AG's office today. Oh. So it's a matter of now having the AG, who's actually got two more days, they'll receive information, they have two more days to get any other information in, uh, and the attorney for Cogswell Sprinkler was there, and Cogswell was there. No, they didn't have an attorney. Cogswell was there themselves. Mm -hmm. Brayton was there with their attorney. Of course, we were there with town attorney and Kyle and Courtney. Uh, and everybody had their say. And uh, the AG, who does the hearings, will take everything into account. And about, in about a, about a week from Monday, there should be a decision. The decision may come back and say, we agree with the second bidder. You've got to make a substitution. If we make a substitution, the difference between the two bidders is about $100,000. So again, like I said, uh, we hope that it comes back in our favor. But again, the wild card is that if it come back, comes back in our favor, there may be an issue with Braid because Braid is saying they don't have that work, and they would, you know, we'd be in a contest with them. So again, <coughs> time will tell. It's, it's all business. It's yeah. you know, it doesn't affect the re the relationship of the parties. They understand, and we understood. And once we get done with the hearing, we talked about getting started out there and so forth. And, these things from time to time. It's a complex business, and every once in a while people are reading things a little bit differently, even though you lay them out as clearly as you can. But, again, we'll see what the AG has to say. Was there an issue with the windows, too, on this? No, the windows, actually, we saved money, because what happened was Bray carried the second better on windows, who was about 40, I think it was about right. $40,000 right, more. Right. Yeah. 
as part of the statute, it allows us to go back and say to break, why didn't you use the low bid? The, state, the statutes And they all very worked clear. it out. So we went back to them, and we, we assumed, and usually the contractors are, are aware, you really have to have a first-hand reason not to carry something. You had a bad experience with them, something along that line. A pending lawsuit. When we got back, when we went back to break, and I asked him, I said, why? He said, well, he said, because we figured that they, they forgot to restrict it to themselves. GBW, right. there was low bidder on the windows, they're generally speaking a general contractor. But lately, they've been doing a lot of windows. They didn't even, I don't even think they applied to be a general they on this particular no. job. So they're, they're never really pre-qualified. I said, well, if that's an erroneous assumption. They never applied for pre-qualification for general. They were a window contractor. Do you have a problem? He said, no, I, we just thought they made a mistake. No, we don't have a problem. We'll be happy to. We'll be happy to swap. So that was all resolved. So we swapped. Oh, incorporated in the yeah, contract. And we double checked because we initially we weren't sure we had to do that as a change order or could we do it at the time before we signed the contract, which is much yeah. less complicated. Mm -hmm. We do it as a change order. I mean, MSBA has a hard time handling negative change orders in their propay system. It just makes it more cumbersome. So we subtracted the 40 grand. It was 34. So 34,000. 34, 34, yeah. And then, again, the contract's written around the new figure. So the price mm -hmm. actually went down. Okay. Yes, George. Uh, does anybody talk about where they're going to stockpile fill? I know there was talk earlier that whether the, they could do it in town, whether they're going to do it on a, what section of the site they want to go to, or is he just. We may find out more tomorrow, but yeah. as of now, they haven't asked to, you know, um, utilize any property beyond the work zone itself. I so. think what we what we have used at one time, we, we tried to be more restrictive than prescriptive, allowing the economies mm -hmm. to flow. In other words, telling them this is what you can't do, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. But within the confines of what's in the site and what's legal, let them. And that's why the documents say you can either leave the septic in place, uh, and, and, and or you can remove it and pump it and so forth if you feel that there's, there's going to be economies in doing that. And that really is really leads to creativity and how to get your numbers down. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that I think lead to being three or four million dollars under budget when you let the creativity flow. Just as long as they know what you can't do, you want to be very strong on what you can't do, and then let them handle what they want to do and how they want to do it within the confines of the site. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Well, I, I just, does that conflict with our earth removal bylaw at all? Let's say if they take <laughs> fill, they bring it off site, then don't bring the same fill back, you know, so that's well, they're going to be They're going to be compelled to obviously work within the confines. Of, the documents are replete with, you better work within the confines of the ordinances, all the rules and regulations, so that as they start to explain what they're going to be doing, we may fall into one of those restrictive categories. So they can't do something that's restricted through town bylaws or anything else that happens within the confines of the regulations. I think there's, um, just mathematically, there's a net um, fill on the site. So there'll be importing fill in any case you know, from off-site. All right. Um, so the only thing we wanted to mention about CONCOM was the fact that we're meeting Thursday night. Is that correct? Right. You didn't have anything we'll, else we'll you We'll try wanted? and find out where we are in the agenda and we'll get it to you. Okay. We we'll distribute the we'll time send a, find out. an email to everyone in case you want to know. based on what we talked about tonight? I, I don't think so. Um, you know, again, it, it's a minor. We'd actually be losing a little bit of, yep. of the porous pavement where the, where the gates are if we go to the, the gate right. modification. And the gravel shoulders, again, it's less disturbance. You know, we're putting back Roman seed okay. in a little bit. I, you know, we can, we'll mention it. That, yeah, if you could you mention know. that right. to Steve, that would be yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That would be good just to give him a heads up. And, mm -hmm. okay. All right, Michelle, you want to give us an up break? Up date on the ground breaking <laughs> <laughs> sure all right so carol margaret donna terry and i we met last week and it looks like we're going to target tuesday november 12th at 3 30 in the afternoon chuck has reached out to the state um the msba who they'll also reach out to the um to treasurer grossman so it looks like we're going with that date mm -hmm. so that's actually our next meeting date as well. So we'll what do Tues Tuesday, one? November 12th at 3.30 in the afternoon. And um, so between Carol's office and Ellie and I, we will reach out to um, you know all of our state representatives, um, all our town boards and stuff like that to make sure that everybody gets an invitation and everybody's aware of um, you know the groundbreaking now that we have the date. 
we can um, further start working on it. And um, we do, Kerry was going to work on um, maybe getting some waters, and then we'll figure what we were going to have some um, either cider or donuts and bottled water and stuff like that to have some snacks there. Um, we might work through some organizations in town to ask them for donations or um, one of the local businesses. So we still have to figure that out. Um, we are we decided that we would like to do it instead of like in front of Pembroke, closer to the back parking lot where the school is actually going to go. So um, Carl and Courtney. Outdoors? You, outdoors, yep. Okay. Is that okay? That's that's what we're planning. November Weather 12, pending. Could get cool, you know, <laughs> get long winded politicians. Well, that, and that's actually another thing. Once we figure out who's going to speak, which now that we know the date, we'll reach out to them. Um, you you know. get like microphones out there. And well, yeah, we, yep. We talked about doing a sound system. Um, you know, we'll have water. We'll probably have a couple of people there just to man the little food table or something like that. Um, See, some people do what? start indoors right, at the cafeteria, say, and then that? the actual shovel part, everybody just reassembles out, okay. outside. That's, we did talk about that. Yeah. I mean, is that more? We, we actually haven't had experience doing it, so um, we can well, talk about that. It just depends on the weather. If it's, it's a nice, more you have it outside. You know, if it's not, you have it early. It's a place of people to sit plan. while yeah. everyone's yeah. talking. It's more convenient if you're going to have refreshments or something available. Yeah. Um, right, so you, you would start indoors. inside, like in the cafeteria, have everybody do their little speech, and right. then just the move everybody out there. to the pile of dirt. Yeah. So the pile of dirt and the shovels, that's you guys and the contractor. Will you guys work on that for us? Yeah, sure, the contractor. Yeah. And they'll yep. bring the shovels with the hats. You know. And, and the hats. will they be donating a shovel to this building? To this uh, I don't know. Usually a couple. Some but, do, and some are running yeah. around confiscating them. You know, the last one we did, the guy was... It was like gathering them all back. Those guys looked like the usually type who would donate you, one. Usually they'll give you a couple, but they'll gather the other ones back. You know, you yeah, might have 12 have or something, yeah. but, you know, one for the town, one for the school. Yeah. And the rest they take right. back. Right. So you guys have done this. So um, just tell us who, in your minds, should either do speaking and or do on the shovel, because we kind of had our list, too. You're going to have a long list right off the bat, because most of the, uh, you know, your state reps right. have, are yep. MSBA people. Yep. Local individuals, you yep. know. The treasurer. That's a, yep. that's a pretty long that. list right off the bat. Okay. Yeah. So you just need to let us know from the state standpoint. You know, we have the treasurer down, but who from the MSBA, if there are multiple people well, that will be speaking? No, just Jack Grossman McCarthy, just the executive director. Is there a program for this, or is it just off the cuff? It's off the cuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. told me they, they told me well, I mean, sometimes you print a program just right. to have the order. Because you would want to know the order oh, of speakers. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. We'll yeah. yes there yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you meant, is there a written thing that everybody so follows? it is confirmed for the 12th? Oh, it's not confirmed yet. You're confirmed. We're con you said it. Mm -hmm. So they'll just show up right. and right. build? Yeah. Yeah. So Chuck, let right. them know. It's usually so just the treasurer and Jack McCarthy. Well, he's already reached out to them, and he told me to just go for the 12th now. Yeah. So we're confirming the 12th. Yeah, but I mean, as far as who speaks, it's generally the oh, treasurer okay. yep. and Jack McCarthy. Okay, and then so those two, whichever okay. state senators or state yep. reps yep. show Yep, I got that, yep. And, and your local, local yeah. contingent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You'd probably yep. want to select men, school person, uh, yeah. Yeah. especially the chair. Yep. Have the kids say a Pledge of Allegiance or sing something? Or Carol. Okay. Yeah, we, well, I, we had talked about probably not doing too much with the kids at this standpoint and save, you know, for something a little more elaborate when we actually have the opening of the mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just our thought. Yeah. It's nice to have a couple kids there. Huh? Yeah, I would. I mean, and have actually the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. Carrie, bring her two. <laughs> you bring your three. <laughs> we talked about inviting all of the parents and the kids. Yeah, I think they right. come. Right. I think we should invite everybody. Right, right, right. We felt like if we sent a nice invitation, if people wanted right. to come. Having a couple of kids to lead the Pledge of Allegiance is a good idea. Right, that is a good idea, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I just for the teachers, I mean, for the for the pair, you know, Ellie and I will probably do something in the newspaper now just to let people know. Carol's going to plan to do a Connect Ed, so she'll reach all the parents in the school district. Um, the other thing... Grade. What was that? Mm -hmm. oh. One from each grade. The other thing we had talked about, too, was... Um, you know, maybe like a specific email invitation for the Elm Street residents. Mm -hmm. You know, we've reached out to them directly before, um, you know, on certain issues, but just to let them know that it's actually getting started now if they haven't been following, you know, mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day that we've been doing. So, am I missing anything that we talked about? Um, I, I would just think about doing all the speeches inside. I think.
think that will be a lot easier in terms of getting sound equipment, people there to watch. It'll definitely be easier. Yeah. 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 yeah we can start. Safety. And the food. You don't have to worry about the weather. And then you don't have to worry about the weather. I have one of those easier. white tarps if the weather's really crappy outside. I could give Carrie even to bring down. Well, you need you a bigger one up. than just a little one. How big is yours? It's one of the bigger white ones, but if you got a couple side by side over the dirt or something, mm -hmm. it's not going to Hey, the hard hat will keep you head dry. Right. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if that's fine. And then we'll, we, we'll move it And then we'll just move everybody outside for the actual physical yeah. thing. Yeah. And then stand around people and you don't can, need to yeah. set chairs or anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, I that, I that makes it, it easier. It's raining on Georgetown's parade. Of course. <laughs> not at this point. Never. No, it won't. Mm mm. Um, okay, so now that we have the date, we'll yep. just get working on our little house How exciting. I'll get with date. you. So, no, that is exciting. So, yeah. and actually it works out well because we don't have school that day in Georgetown. So, oh, that was yeah. one, that was a logistical issue for us oh, because if the buses that's, and the parents were... What is that day? Um, it's actually the day after Veterans Day. They have a professional day. Did you say 3.30? I thought 3 that's why you picked 3.30, so it would be after school time. Yeah, we would still have issues with the teachers being back there and everything, so this date actually just worked, <laughs> from a logistics standpoint work really well. Because pro pro professional development, most teachers will be gone or they can just not park in that parking lot that day, right, you know, for that day because there won't be parents there. So, mm -hmm. anyway. All so right. That's it. And that brings us to construction changes authorization already, Chuck? Oh. No, we talked. We talk, oh, okay. Said, you know, we talked about that last This time. is just in general. Yeah. I thought you yeah. had because some for us already. Okay. It is very helpful if, if, if somebody is authorized to act up to $25,000 after the architect and MBC collaborate on something as, as necessary that has to be done. Right, we talked about this. Number, right. yep. well, there's a number to be arrived at at some point mm -hmm. that it would be very helpful to have someone available that could say, okay. So we don't hold things up. Some things have to happen very quickly. We'll try and make as, those as infrequent as possible, but <laughs> those are things that, uh, that, that will come up that will require some, some very quick action, whether it's, you know, we've had it where the mayors have been involved, the, the town administrators have been involved, uh, the, the superintendent of schools has been involved, whoever the, the, the town designates as an individual would be most helpful. Right. Okay. For example, so. Mike, but what do we do if it's on a Friday? Don't make changes. Yeah, we'll call Mike on I mean, his cell phone. They have to be three people yeah. and you yeah. get any two of them. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 If, if you had three people so that you only had to get two of them, yeah. okay. you know, if one weren't available, um, that, you know, people feel more comfortable sometimes yeah, could, with could three be, instead of just one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You probably need to. Mm -hmm. So maybe so like, to like maybe to Mike, Carol, and you. Or, or me, who's ever well, somebody who's around. you, because yeah. Michelle's yeah, more around. Or yeah. even Carrie. Yeah. I mean, Carol doesn't, I don't know if I, yeah. but, but Carrie's usually around. During the day? You don't go too far out of Georgetown during the day. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. So. Just give that's, it some yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would say I'd say the next meeting we definitely want to have something now. I don't see anything happening in the next month that's going to require that kind of activity. Okay. So I would say the next meeting it would be appropriate to come up with something. So whether it's one, three, whatever you whatever you think is, is to okay. your advantage. So this is for emergency change orders or would, emergency yeah, I call, CCDs. Yeah, I, would call them, I would call them really non-discretionary changes, things that have to happen. You know, something. So are these like CCDs. It could be a CCD, or it could be a number that we, we arrive at right there, and a CCD could be issued. Usually, change proposal. Yeah. You, you just say, go ahead. Get formal, yeah. You just group have together to into a change order. order. Yeah. Which you don't have to be approved. Approved. You, you just have to be accessible on your yeah, phone. Those, yeah, those, those you know. Yeah. 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 Those you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and you do it monthly, like you said, versus. It would probably be more on the CCD form. Yeah, it would have to because. Construction change directive. Where something has to happen, and you're directing the work to be done because it's it's has to be done, and it has to have, be, have an answer right away. Mm. So that could that be like a blasting ledge? Well, blasting ledge. Uh, we actually have unit limits, prices for that. We're all set um, with blasting ledge. We have a, a quantity in in the documents, and we have a unit price in the documents. So when we hit ledge, we're going to start blasting. That would become an issue if we ran over that quantity. Then we would call you and say, look, we had a thousand yards. We're going to, looks like we're going to be running into 1,200 based on the computations. Then we would call and say we're going to need the authorization and take the other 200 out. Okay. 
That's an easy one because then you have it based on a price already, right? right? Like pre-negotiated. Yeah. yeah, and we have a number of unit prices in the documents, whether it's hazardous the, materials, yeah. unsuitable the, materials. The real difficulty on CCDs, um, they're kind of dangerous because a lot of times um, you're, you're signing away the right to do something without the exact price. So, But I, I think from what I'm hearing from you guys, you will know a price right then before you do it, or would you not? Well, the, 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 I mean, generally, the, the, it's when you can't arrive at a agreement on a price, but you know the work has to get done, okay. that you would use a CCD. Okay. Our, our preference, I think, Pat, as well, we want to try to arrive at a, a mutually agreeable price. That we would recommend to you and say, yes, this work is extra, yes, this price is reasonable, and it can't wait for the monthly meeting, so please approve it now. Right, okay. And it's a good tool, and we hope it never has to happen, but it's a very good tool also, because under the CCD language, if we can't come to terms on a price, and their X and where Y, and we go through the whole bit. And it goes to we can bit. impute a dollar value in there. We'll pay on that dollar value. They have the right to contest it and supply any information. Okay. But it keeps the job going. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So the last thing is really just Michelle has uh, some dates for us to look at for oh, next for the year. Upcoming, yeah, the town calendar is not out, so I'm not able yeah. to book out meetings until sure. around mid-November. But I think what we were so, saying is that it would be most helpful to, every to do the two, second, second Tuesday, Tuesday right. of every month. Did, did I send that out an email? Did I send out a list of dates? Yeah. 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 Did I, okay, so those are the dates. So, oh, it, it, and that, that equates Tuesday. to the second Tuesday Tuesday. of every month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. when I can, yeah. which I, I still am not going to be able to book to mid to end November, she said. Oh, that's fine. So, you know, and we'll find a place. You know, so right. those are the dates that we have, yep. and we'll book out through June with the second Tuesday of the month. So, Excellent. okay, all right. Oh, Anything? wait, I just a question. You you brought up blasting. If there is blasting that has to get done, do they notify anyone oh, before yes. they blast? Oh, 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 yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> State law about that. <laughs> okay. Every blast okay. survey has to be done. You know, and okay. then there's notification that has to be so, done. It's okay. a very specific process. Okay. Just checking. That's controlled just by checking. the fire department. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have a question on the, um, I know it's not part of this project, but we talked about it during it. Mike, maybe you know a little bit more. That's as far as it's gotten. So we don't have an engineer yet. We don't have... <laughs> Okay. Oh, so we got somebody to do the preliminary. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. I think that's it. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. That was the quickest second Motion I've ever heard. Motion carried. Motion carried. Motion carried. Motion carried. Motion carried. Motion carried. Motion carried.